What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Jesus Conde and today we're going to be doing this medieval ruins like fantasy scene and yeah, let's get started so the first thing that I'm doing here is doing a little bit of background with a really soft brush that's gonna help me decide some kind of direction with my composition although nothing very specific honestly uh, what I'm looking for is to have to get rid of that blank canvas which is very scary at the beginning and start drawing some um, trees and stuff on the foreground just to start adding some ingredients to this scene um, keep in mind that I'm using a little reference I have some pictures on my phone or stuff that I, I've seen online and I'm basically just copying uh, some of that to have an idea of what to do with the with the foreground and some of the shapes so uh, keep that in mind that um, I'm not doing all of this from my head um, in fact um, I'm trying to be very forgiving with using the, the, the reference I'm not copying 100% of it just little pieces here and there uh, so I encourage you to use any reference that you might find on your paintings and try to be free um, as much as you can and just copying a little bit of ingredients here and there <clears throat> i will also later like try to even step out of that of those references and just try to add or um, you know create stuff from my own so it doesn't look like I'm just copying something because it's not the idea. The idea is that you can create the stuff from your own and you're just using this reference as a guide. So it kind of looks believable or it kind of looks like it has some structure. So I knew that I wanted an arch on a forest, some kind of a woods, very uh, remote location kind of like something kind of hidden between trees and that it was very worn and like I'm um, old and also damaged but it was it was happened so much time that the uh, overgrown around it uh, it's kind of taken um, a lot of a space out of it um, this kind of vegetation is not um, it's not tall so it wouldn't be like overgrown in the sense of like it's almost completely covered but you will definitely be having like trees around it and stuff like that <clears throat> also I wanted to look kind of melancholic I guess um, it should look cold also like very cold place it shouldn't look like a warm pretty um, it also shouldn't look um, happy so I'm trying to go for that kind of a yeah melancholic kind of look I guess So even though I have some warm colors, the palette is kind of desaturated in general. So that's kind of what I'm trying to, to find at the beginning here of the creation of this page. So look how I, I just added like a, an adjustment layer and I went darker with everything um, at the same time. Also, I increase the saturation just a little bit so I can have more to work with on the background. And I'm trying to add a little bit of warm colors in the, in the ground right there in the middle. So just to see how it feels. <clears throat> I'm also struggling with my brush. So I ha I'm having to uh, take one that I had and modify it a bit so I can get this kind of weird effect with um, with some of the settings so every br every brush throw that I do I get like different range of colors so that was really important 
on making this image to get that feel um, that it kind of looks like a traditional uh, feel of it which is difficult uh, being so digital but it's definitely possible to do <clears throat> I was trying to add maybe some water there but I wasn't really feeling the vibe that it should have water so I stopped and I will later change that and I was struggling a bit with what dark color to use uh, I didn't want to go full black I tried it and it looked bad so really dark purple or really dark brown or blue uh, was looking good for for what I was doing and I used that really really for most of the shaping of the rocks and, and some of the trees here I'm trying to add a little bit of that light background so I can make that centerpiece pop up a little bit here I painted the whole arch uh, but then decided to desaturate that area that layer that I created there <clears throat> and extend the arch a little bit taller I will later expand the canvas too in an attempt to make this look even more epic or something a lot of the the complexity in this image it's really me starting to detach from the from the reference once I started to detach from the reference, it was kind of easier to, to find what I wanted. At the beginning, I was kind of just like stuck with it. I didn't really know where to go. So as soon as I started to detach from that, I started to have more ideas of what I wanted to do. Some of those greens are really desaturated. It was really hard for me not to go more saturated green or like a, a, a bluish kind of green. And it didn't feel right at the moment, but later uh, while working on it, it kind of started to make sense to use those desaturated greens because everything here is kind of grayish. So if I was using a more like greener color, it, it was going to start to look fake and it's not like I'm trying to achieve hyperrealism or anything but it definitely I definitely don't want it to look cartoony at all I really want it to look kind of realistic I mean for what it is which is a, just a fun uh, image that I'm trying to create here kind of like a illustration concept art whatever you know so it's not like I want to do like a super detailed concept art piece it's more like just for fun kind of a painting but it could definitely be uh, a keyframe kind of painting for a project or whatever here I'm trying to test what I can do with color balance, but I didn't like any of the results. I tried to also um, change color and, and hue and saturation a bit to see what happened. Here I'm testing some other structure in the background, although I didn't like it too much. And there's a lot of testing, there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of trying things. <coughs> So 
some vegetation, uh, some old leaf on the ground, adding vegetation and details in the top of the arches. And all of that is me just thinking, you know, it's not like I have it all figured out. I'm trying to figure it out on the on the spot. This is the green color that I was talking about. It's kind of like pale, um, orange kind of a color. Um, I decided to go darker on the foreground and expand it vertically. I also added a lot of more saturation to it because I didn't want it to look that sad anymore. And I suddenly were thinking, all right, it's looking kind of... I know I said I wanted to go like a depressing route, but it's more its more like a melancholic kind of a thing. It's not really supposed to look dark, like uh, spooky. So I went, what's missing here? And I thought it could be missing some uh, trees that are not old or that still have, like they're lush still, instead of all like, um, dry so and it seems to also be like a very humid place it's not really like a dry place to be in so it wouldn't make sense to have all those trees unless they are thick um, sick all those trees to be dry like that so I thought well I can kind of see the shape of a tree in the background so let's try adding one there to see what happens and i started to like the idea of having this huge tree and also that became like a like the idea of having an old tree in the background so if the tree was old it was gonna be big and lush <clears throat> and also it was kind of a struggle to decide what color to do it I didn't want it to be yellow or orangey. It was definitely gonna be on the fog, so it should be pale. It shouldn't be way too pale, but I didn't want it to do to be so contrasty either. So something like that, I think it was fine. And then, because everything is kind of grayish, I was losing the top of the the top of the arches. So uh, I either needed to put them in dark at least the top part or make it even lighter and i thought well it will be cooler if it's just like a shadow or something that's going on there so i started to add some shadow in there and i think it looked pretty cool so yeah that made it possible to separate it from the background and at this point, I'm already like happy with what I'm, what I have. So it's just a matter of like, what can I do to enhance it and make it a bit better, you know? So <clears throat> adding a little bit of like holes between the, the leaves in the tree kind of makes um, a little bit of detail, but I just, I was thinking if I go way too detail on that, it will look like, it will, it will take attention from the ruins and I don't want that. Also some broken trees and, and trunks in the bottom of those arches in the back. So I started to feel happier and happier with what I had. 
and more comfortable with what I was doing. Like I'm already liking this, so now I just think I just gotta think how to make it better and not to fuck it up with <laughs> overworking it or doing way more detail than is necessary. So I'm constantly thinking uh, if I go too detailed, it might look bad. So, but I, I know that I needed to enhance. Um, add more detail on the tree on the on the right and also all the foreground I was feeling kind of kind of forgotten there adding some little ferns there and leaves some moss something that I didn't add here was uh, mushrooms but I will definitely try something with mushrooms in the next one I'm feeling like I should do something like that maybe I can tie it up with my comic book or, uh, or something like that And I'm going with for with this like darker greenish bluish kind of a color for the shadow and like all the ambient occlusion effects between the rocks and things like that just to give more volume and, and separate some of the shapes because it was looking kind of flat everything so um, that's what I'm trying to go for with this um, dark color and I'm trying to go everywhere with it, touch everything that I can. And I'm pretty optimistic about the result that I'm going to get at this point. Now I'm gonna be trying to add some reflective light on the rocks, kind of like a specular reflection from the sky, but it was kind of, I don't know, it's kind of lucky that I got that color right, because right now everything is so grayish that it doesn't look really like there's gonna be any reflection from the sky, so I just picked up this color and made a little bit more saturated this like bluish kind of purpley color and it turned out pretty well uh, and that's something you usually get on wet surfaces or like very humid areas you get this kind of reflection on surfaces um, yeah I think it, it worked out it really gave this strange realistic feeling to the painting even though it doesn't really look hyper realistic or anything it gave this kind of um, nice realistic look almost like painted from from a real real reference like on place at least to me that's kind of how it felt like um, this tree had this kind of like very detailed area of leaves and I didn't, I didn't want to uh, left that out because it looked really nice on the original but I I'm aware that it's kind of like way more detailed than it should like it really wasn't <clears throat> that necessary to do all of those leaves there and all those little uh, parts And yeah, I think in general I like the result. I feel like it's a it was a nice way to come back to do a pure painting. <laughs> Here I was trying to put a guy, but then I 
completely resigned to the idea of doing that. Like it's not necessary honestly, I think it looks good how it is. And this is it guys, I really hope, hope you like this image, I really like to work on it and I feel like uh, I want to do more of this kind of uh, uh, paintings from now on. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one.